If you've been following me for any length of time and keeping up with me and what we talk about on this channel, you would know that I wear a lot of different hats. A wife, a mom, an entrepreneur of sorts, a content creator, an influencer. Depending on the day, the strong friend, the big sis, the makeup artist, the hairstylist, you name it. But one thing I don't do enough on this channel is acknowledge the people behind the scenes that help me make all this go. And truly give flowers to the man that makes sure that all this goes. And what better way to start off Vlogtober than to share really how we got here, how he got here. He leads by example in a way that I don't see many people doing. So in today's video, I asked him to share what has it really been like for him looking back four years to the man he was when he worked in corporate America versus the man he is today? How do you describe the version of you that was in corporate America? What were his aspirations? The best word to use would be competitive, proud, unstoppable selfish and really of those the only ones that i or i should say one that i was willing to admit out loud was competitive i twisted competition into being something good it was this idea that like if you're not giving me the opportunity then you're something or someone who needs to be conquered you were the latest person on my board. And it wasn't even, you know, a bad thing. It it didn't feel like a bad thing. I, I wasn't convinced that it was an issue. I used to tell myself that I was going to be the black runny, runny feed. Runny feed runs Kith. And Kith is a lifestyle brand. But like they care about, you know, storytelling, the product, it all like comes together. It's not nothing is like, you know, secondary. They treat everything that's a part of a collection like it's the main thing. And I always I've always had a passion for the entirety of a thing, like not just a piece of it. So what the product is, is just as important as the story that's being told which is just as important to how it comes out, which is just as important as the materials and the quality and the sourcing and who it's talking to and who is targeted and all of those things. Like, so I want it to be that. And if it wasn't gonna happen to Nike, it was gonna happen myself. At the swag boat. The swag boat. But I took that, you know, same thing into every day that I went to work every single day and I had this this thing where I had two 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 missions that I wrote down number one was it has to be only Nike so another brand couldn't do it so that meant you know I'm using Nike's DNA I'm using Nike's athletes I'm using Nike's resources to where it's like only Nike could do this Number two, it has to impact people's lives. So, so it, even though I didn't, you know, fully understand what was happening, what was going on, it still had to impact people's lives. What was the final moment you decided this is it? I'm quitting. Whew. It was really my lifestyle change. It was when I started to truly take the father, like, seriously it was when i was saying like hey i'm no longer going to take the shortcuts that i used to take i'm no longer going to you know hide how much i care about people or try to do it in a slick way that's like you know acceptable to the masses so that i can keep climbing and you know keep relationships and those types of things as i was as i was changing spiritually and this was like the end of 2018 into 2019. Like I'm changing spiritually. 
And now my eyes are being opened to like, okay, this is really not, you know, possible. I can't keep going in the direction that I'm going in spiritually, but then, you know, come in here and have all of that tested every day of like, you know, how are you going to handle this? Are you going to get angry and operate in this way? Where are we going, Michael? Where are we going? Where are we going? To what? To the store? Yeah. Did you all go to um, homeschool today? Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. Did mommy do a good job? Yeah. What up, MJ? Oh, yeah? Yeah? All right. Say bye-bye. Bye, Gigi. Go <laughs> bye, Gigi. Gigi not here, my girl. Say, we're going to Costco. Costco. Are you going to continue to show love and, and, and continue to have these conversations and continue to go out and do these things? It was after I confessed to cheating. Now my lifestyle has to change. Now I can't, you know, go out as much. I can't, you know, be around this person and that person. I just can't experience it. That was when it became like, I can't, if I want to continue the life that I'm trying to build in myself through my repentance, through my seeking the father and all those things, if I can't, you know, openly do that, then I can't stay. And I remember realizing after after experiencing like what it would take, like how those people in certain positions operate, how they are with their wives and how they are with their children, how I didn't. I remember one person in particular, I remember not seeing his wife but one time. And when I saw them, we'd had more conversation like in passing when it was just him and maybe other people then with his wife and deep down I was always you know desiring that I was always trying to see how you could do both like how how can you climb the ranks and be the cool kid and the cool man really but at the same time you know keep it together at home like I've always sought to do both and so I would seek different men specifically black men who I thought was doing that. But even thinking now, none of them were. But I was blinded by the power and the position and the company that they had that like, I I couldn't even, like the writings were on the wall, but I was choosing to ignore them. So it wasn't like a final moment per se. It was a lot of moments. Well, okay. Final moment was I remember not getting a job, a, a position that I knew I deserved, that I was, you know, well qualified for and all of those things because of the politics on the inside. And I'm not a politician. I don't care for politics at all. I believe that your yes should be yes and your no should be no. Like, do what you say you're going to do. As much as we trust his word, I believe that he should be able to trust ours. And I remember it was the day after Thanksgiving in 2019. And um, we were sitting in our, our kitchen and I got a phone call about the job and I'd already known I didn't get the job, but it was like, uh, they couldn't tell me why. And it was almost like they were taking control of my career. It was not up to me. And it was probably like that for a while, but that's when it hit me. I, I got off the phone. I said, babe, you heard that? Like, this is what I'm up against. We talked about, you know, God 
He wants me to leave. What do you think? And you said to me, you said, if God is telling you this, then I believe to it. That was a Friday on Monday at 5 p.m. I sent in my letter of resignation. Do you ever question your decision? Oof. Um, I've questioned my decision when we've fallen into, you know, financial issues or times where I felt like if I was, if I still had that career, especially where I would be now or then, um, we wouldn't be in this predicament or in those predicaments. So really it's only those times or times where people say certain things or, um, you know, try to use me not having a corporate job or nine to five, trying to use that against me. It's in those moments that I second guess myself. Um, I used to have a friend that would hit me up about different opportunities or different, you know, things that are out here that I could easily do. And because of those things, yeah. But every single time, every time it happens, the father confirms where he has me. Every single time. And really, like, most of the times that it was happening was early on. And, like, Jade, you were big with that for me because you would remind me of, you know, what I do every day spiritually and how I wasn't being judged by you based on, you know, how much money I brought in or any of those things. So really it's when the things of the world come and I'm, you know, I think about that. Other than that, nah. So do I ever question? Yes. But it's normally out of a place of um, outside influence, not from the father. Did you try to go back? I flirted with it before. You know, people reach out with different opportunities and it's like, oh, that sounds good. I could do that. And depending on what's in our bank account, it's like, I could use that check. But try? Nah. Because number one, I could feel that it's not in the father's plans for me right now. And the longer I'm out, the closer I've gotten to him. And back when I used to try to, when I would say like, oh, I want to, I want to change, change the world with this collection. I'm going to change this world with this t-shirt. With where the father has me now, I, I'm actually doing that. And it's, it's, you know, deeper and more profound because now it's like, I'm changing the way people father and husbands and families and generations. And I'm around men who are truly seeking the will of the father for their lives. And it's changing not just their life, but it's changing their families' lives. It's changing their marriages. It's strengthening their marriages and parenting just the minute they are in just all of the things. So it's taking my ambitions of wanting to change the world, wanting to change people's lives. And it's like taking that to another level. How would you describe who you are today? What are your aspirations now? Wow. Who I am today is nothing like I thought I would be at 34 years old. Like nothing. Who I am today? I <laughs> I am literally operating where the Father wants me to operate. Today I'm more gentle and more compassionate. Today I'm more patient. Today I have more vision. And I was considered at Nike like a visionary. So when I say more vision now, it's like, it's not more vision. What's the coolest, craziest, most 
futuristic, like trend setting thing. But the vision is like being able to see where I am. Being able to like see what's right in front of me to know that this is the way the father wants me to go. And when you put all those visions together, eventually you get to the future. So I'm not trying to, you know, paint the future or influence the future. I'm like, I'm in the now and I'm doing the now exactly the way the father wants me to do it. And doing that and trusting him to that level, not, not only does it bring the future eventually, but it also brings the future that he desires, which is better than anything, like it's better than my best. So my, my, one of my things was always being on, like we'd be out to dinner or I'm, you know, walking around the streets of Europe and I'll walk up to somebody and just, Hey, you know, why do you like that shirt? Can I feel that fabric? You know, are you interested in this? Or I like that all to get an edge to bring back and, you know, create from that place. But now my edge is being connected to the father, it's being repentant. So like where I am today is a uh, focus on who the father created me to be. Unlocking healing. I've healed so much because from all those places I was describing earlier came came insecurities. It came self-esteem issues. I overcompensated in so many ways. I was looking to everything and everywhere but the Father for validation. I looked great on the outside and I had style and all those things and I still have style and all of that, but I'm so much more comfortable with where he has me I was superficial. I cared about the brands and all that. And, you know, now I value my family. I value my, my wife over everything else. I truly now value people over products. My aspirations now are to be exactly who the father created me to be in loving people and inspiring people to do the same. And to some people, it may look like a serious sacrifice or even a weakness because he's not playing that traditional masculine role of going out and providing in this like bringing money to the table kind of context. But he does so much more than that. And when we say things like that, are we putting more emphasis on dollar bills than on the spiritual health of ourselves, of our families? Quitting corporate America did a lot for my husband. A lot. Quitting corporate America healed my husband. Was it the single factor in my husband's healing? No, God was. It wasn't until he left corporate America, that he was able to actually hear God clearly about who he was as a person and what he was actually supposed to be doing with his life.